These old Xeon processors are out of control. Out of control! I'm down a rabbit hole, and it's filled with cheap Xeon processors, and I like it. After our last video covering a processor with six cores that ran at 3.8 gigahertz, I've been getting a lot of suggestions for these old Xeon processors in my comments, as well as doing some research, and I have to keep checking them out. And if anything, there are too many choices. We're going to test out another older Xeon, this time a $19 processor. Now, there were two of these in particular that I was kind of conflicted on, so I ended up getting them both. One was 19, one was like 25. Today we're covering the $19 processor. The other, which has eight cores, I'm going to save for another video where I upgrade a Z440, and that one's going to be specced more towards gaming. But for this video, where I'm going to replace the processor in a machine, again, a Z440, but that I use mainly for video editing, I landed on this, the Xeon E5 2640 V4. This has 10 cores and 20 threads. What I would describe in the most technical terms as quite a few cores. Now this only has a 2.4 gigahertz base clock rate, but it runs at a 3.4 gigahertz turbo boost speed. Overall for $19, I'd really say that's not bad. In case you didn't catch the last video about the $20 processor or the comments where we had some pretty good discussions about the pros and cons of these types of CPUs. We'll really quickly hit the highlights of why these might be so inexpensive. Then we'll look into the specs and do some testing to see why I think these are a really awesome deal. Downsides. First, these types of processors have no integrated graphics. But for most people, that's not going to be an issue as almost everyone is going to run a dedicated GPU and there are plenty of low-cost options for that. The second issue. If you're looking for a motherboard to match one of these, it quickly becomes a not-so-budget-friendly build, as motherboards that have the socket type for this type of processor tend to be pretty expensive. So your options are limited in terms of motherboards, and they also tend to be pretty expensive. But that being said, even though these processors might not be great for from-scratch builds, they are a good option for one of my favorite things, which is upgrades. Specifically, upgrading older servers or office-type PCs, which I really enjoy doing. And when it comes to ultra-budget PCs, that's really where it's at. If you happen to have a board or a computer around that can hold one of these processors, or if you can find one for cheap, it's obviously a solid and inexpensive upgrade. Now, there are a few low-cost options that you can upgrade with one of these processors. The main cheap solution i found is this, the HP Z440. Not only can this old computer hold this type of processor, but there are a really good option for other kinds of upgrades as well, which as I've mentioned, I found a couple of these for super cheap on eBay, so in the future I'm going to be making other videos about this model specifically and the kinds of upgrades you can do, and those I'm going to focus more on gaming and they might get a little more intense, so if that's something that you're interested in, keep an eye out. For this modification, I'm going to use the same PC that I did in the last video, the $20 processor video, because I'm going to use this machine specifically for video editing, so I'm going to have the 10-core processor, and instead of having a more gaming-focused GPU, I'm going to keep the Fire Pro that I've had in it, and that should work perfectly fine. These Z440s, I really do like them, especially I found a couple of them for like 50 bucks, but anyway, that's a later video. Now that we've covered some of the upsides, downsides, and all-around sides, that was stupid. Let's throw this into the machine, and then we'll do some basic testing and stuff like that. And I don't have a lot of space, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do, except for, oh yeah, chair desk. Now, swapping out processors is one of my least favorite things to do because it's kind of touchy, but I do it for you. I do it for the people. Here we have our CPU fan, and we're just gonna pop that off real quick. All right, the fan is removed. CPU next, let's do it. Maybe if I can. I just did this like a week ago. Oh my god, come on! It's both of them. Something along those lines. 
Oh, shh, paste. Paste! Why would you do it, paste? Why do you run from me? All right, and there's that six core CPU that we put in before. And not to fret, I will be using that. I, again, that's a pretty decent processor. So I will be putting that in a different machine eventually. Oh man, look at this thing. Look at this CPU holder. What kind of contraption is this? What is this contraption? Ugh. Oh, I like that they shipped it in something like this. I mean, that's cool, but i would never... I don't know how to get it out. There it is. I was touch and go for a second. And the CPU. And I'm gonna go flat with this one, just to make sure it goes in there squarely. The reason I get paranoid about this is because in one of the other videos we were doing a build, and the CPU must not have been just perfect or snug in there, and it ended up getting beep codes, and that sucked. I think that one, somehow. And then this one next. I'm not going to go crazy with the paste because I'm not... I'm not going to remove the, old, the paste from the old fan. I'm just going to put some thin lines. And maybe some here. And maybe a little here. I don't like how this just comes out in these thin little lines. I prefer to put it just a dot in the center. This is not the right computer. I grabbed the wrong one! Oh no. Oh my god, why? What is wrong with me? Alright. Removing this carefully. I'm going to put this in the computer I actually meant to put it in. As I've mentioned before, professionalism. Now for the computer that I actually meant to remove the CPU from. All right, here we go. Fan removal first. Screw removal on the correct PC this time. All right, and there's more paste on this fan, on the bottom of this fan as well. So it won't be so bad with the skimpy amount of paste that I had left. I might have used too much on this one. Now, here we go. Inserting our 10 core CPU. That one first, I believe. All right, we're moving along this time. Now let's get our fan back on here. All right, there we go. Our CPU is installed, so unless I made some other mistake, which let's face it, is likely, there should be nothing left but to test. All right, so the computer's fired up and everything's running properly, so we're just gonna do a few basic tests to make sure that everything's functioning well. Because this has 10 cores, I imagine we're going to be able to open a lot of tabs at once, but we'll test it out anyway. And there's only so much room on the screen. I'm just gonna do like six windows, have them all playing a YouTube video online. I'll set it like 1080p or whatever. And as expected, everything's running well. We have no issue playing a bunch of YouTube videos at once. So let's move on to something more demanding, specifically gaming. Now even though I didn't use a GPU that's specifically specced for gaming, it is more demanding and offers a sort of a benchmark of how well the processor can do. So we're going to jump in a game we covered in the $20 CPU video, Devil May Cry 5. This game is new-ish. I think it came out a couple years ago. We were running 1920 by 1080 with the highest in-game graphical settings. And you might not be able to tell as I'm recording the screen directly here, but the game looks really clear. It looks sharp. Everything is smooth, moves nicely, and we're hanging at a pretty consistent 60 frames per second. There are some minor dips, like occasionally I'll see it drop down to like 58, 56, but I don't, I don't think I've seen it go any lower than that. Hanging right around 60, looking pretty good. Once again, I'm really impressed with these older Xeon processors, especially for the price you can find them for, with this one again only being $19. And also, once again, I really appreciate everyone who's been watching these videos. And that is all. Catch you later.